everyone, it's Sharon Kelly from the Berwick Public Library. It's so nice to have our patrons be able to come in the library again by appointment. Unfortunately, we can't have big programs with large gatherings, but we can bring our programming right to you. We're going to start off our programming with a local artist here in Berwick, and that's Ruth Blue. And Ruth's artwork is now hanging at the library. Did you know that we have local artists change and bring their artwork to the library every two months? So please help me welcome Ruth Blue. She's going to talk about her new book and her artwork within her book and what inspires her. So again, help me welcome Ruth to the Berwick Public Library. And remember, you can come in and see Ruth's artwork yourself. Just give us a call or log on online and make an appointment. Thanks so much. See you at the library. Hi there. My name is Ruth Ann Blue, and I am the first virtual book talk given by the Berwick Public Library. I'm kind of a guinea pig in that way. This is my first book. And at the same time, I have all the artwork that goes in this book on display in the library, along with many of my other paintings. So I hope you will come and see it. This is the first painting from the book right here. Let's go look at it in person. So as you can see, this is the first painting of my book. The paintings came about really because at, at the time, which was maybe about three or four years ago, I was looking for a way to make extra money, but it was not by making a book. I had a friend who said, why don't you illustrate some of my poetry and we'll begin that way. So this particular painting was an illustration, a takeoff of an illustration on one of her paintings. But the words to it are not as we read, they are now, the stars do shine, the moon does glow, entwined by magic with the fire below. We dance in a circle without any end. We look for a reason on which to depend. Deep in the magic of fire, moon, and stars, we break our hearts open, and soon they are filled with questions and answers, a moment of truth, which leads us to find what our hearts to pursue. On to the second, to the next painting. So here we are at the second painting in the book. The paintings actually came all from these characters here. I have a friend that suggested, why don't you do a painting of each one of the characters on this first page? So this first painting here, or the second painting, is from this character right here. At the time, I couldn't decide if she was a bride or a fairy or an elf, but it turned into be a fairy. So here is her story. A magical soaring angel elf sprite, she floats and she soars through the stars of the night and sprinkles sweet magic on all those in sight. The magic of peace, the magic of grace, from the sprite's outstretched hands to the whole human race. Onward to the next painting. This is the ballerina. And she comes also from this painting. She's the little girl in the front whose dress I thought appeared to be a ballerina's dress. So she turned into a ballerina. Now I did have some help with the words on this because I was having a little bit of difficulty and I had a friend that suggested she dances with the fire which never will fade. So that was the last line of the poem at this time. So the poem goes further. By the shine of the stars and the bright moon's face this dancer leaps forth with precision and grace. The fire her companion, her partner in space. The moon is her spotlight, the earth is her stage. 
She dances with the fire, which never will fade. Onward to the next painting. And here we are again at the very next painting in the book. It is the two young ones. I call them the young ones. And they are from this young girl and this young girl. So the characters still continue throughout. The words here are, the young ones sit by the light of the fire. They tell a long story of joy, hope, and desire. Magic enwraps them as their story is told. With the flames of the fire, their wishes unfold. To float in the air to the heavens above, and soon the two girls are surrounded by love. Onward to the next, next painting. And this is the next painting in the book. And it comes from this person right here. And here are her words. Friendship is golden, and on this bright night, it dazzles and shines and creates a bright light. This goddess with horse shows what friendship should be. It's all based on love, respect, and loyalty. And the next painting, which is right beside it here at the library, kind of one of my favorites, because it's an older lady. And she's this person right here with the long white hair, the red dress and the long white hair. Magic is wisdom as seen by the glow of moonlight and starlight and firelight below. This owl has a gift which it sometimes bestows on those who will listen. It's always the old. The gift is received and continues to grow with the words of wise women who further its flow. And on to the next painting, which is down that way. And here is our next painting which is actually a painting of me, taking from this photograph many years ago. So I hope you enjoy that, and you can see the connection between the two. I felt with the voice of the other women in the show, I had to put my own voice as well. So here I go. They say parrots can talk. That is what they do. Like magic, they've taught me to speak my mind, too. And so I have written of magic, moon, and fire, and women who taught us to heed our desires. As most of you probably know, I'm not too quiet about my voice nowadays. But at this time, at the time of this painting, I was very quiet. So maybe the parents did teach me to talk. And onward to the next painting, which is right beside it, here at the library. Now this one is about all the animals that we have previously seen. The horse, the owl, the parrots. The animals we've seen all dance around the fire. Their presence has shown that they too have desires. Their wishes match ours in our search for proof it comes to us all in a moment of truth. The truth is that everyone has their own worth. It's the right of us all from the day of our birth. And then what is the final painting is right beside it. This painting I actually began maybe 25 years ago, and I finally had a place for it in this book. By the light of the moon, by the glow of the fire, we women become that which we most desire. We are dancers, we are mermaids, we are filled with delight. We soar and we twist and we swim through the night. And finally, the book needed a cover. And this is the cover right here. It's called Fire Dance. And the words of the cover go, by the glow of the moon, by the spark of a fire, 
Fire dance inspires women to be what they most desire. As I said, this is more of an illustrated poem than a book, but I was very, very particular when I tried to have this published. It was done by a small place right here on High Street in um, Summersworth. It's very unusual because it's so slim that they did not know how to bind it except by a ring, a ring binder. So instead of the ring binder, I thought that I would lace it with uh, leather, black leather, because I think that kind of went with the theme much better. So I wanted to have the size, which was nine by 12, and I wanted to have this lacing. The unusual thing about this, I think for printing, and I know for painting, is that any one of these paintings on black has to be painted white first because the paint will seep right into the black, any color paint. So this fire right here was first a white fire. All the stars and the dots were white and the moon was white until I filled in the color. And I believe that's also true with printing. These pages were originally white, as you can see by the side of the book, and they had to print the colors on top of that white. So I think that's unusual in that way. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that most of the words to this I also work as a part-time toll collector. And in between cars is when I wrote the words to most of these, this, this poem. So little by little, it grew and grew. And here is the result of it. So I hope you enjoy looking at it. And I just wanted to say that I also, if you're interested, I have posters of each of these, and they can be ordered. They have the words that go with the paintings below the posters. And I have cards. I'll put them right here that go with each of the paintings. And let me show you one of the cards. Because they're black cards, it's pretty hard to write on them. I'll show you what I did, was in each of the cards, I put vellum paper so that you could write on it. But the words that go with that painting are on the inside of the cover of the card. So I hope you enjoyed all of this, and please come to the library and see everything. Thank you. As a child, I used to draw a lot. And throughout my life, whenever I felt there was a time of difficulty or need, I would try to take a drawing class. As far as painting, I never touched a brush until I had a professor who was an amazing professor who had introduced me to ink and a Chinese brush. And my hand just flew across the canvas. It was amazing to me. I had never thought of painting until that time. I took some wonderful courses with this particular professor. I loved her. So as a result, I find that I paint a lot and I find that I am affected by the world around me, often, often by, for example, the painting over here called Chaos and the feeling also that we all have a life force, which is a painting that is here, that something that propels us forward, every one of us. I also, people consider me a landscape artist because I do a lot of landscapes, which you can see here also. But I also do very whimsical, the elephants and the shells. I do stuff from simply my imagination. So I enjoy all aspects of art and many 
for example, gallery owners will tell you that you should have everything in one genre, one specific style. I can't do that. It's not interesting to me. What's interesting is jumping from one thing to another, having different ways to paint and different ways to feel about things. I feel that painting is meditative. It's kind of like it's the only thing you're doing when you do it. Your mind is only on that. In fact, your mind isn't even there. It's more the movement of the brush and the paint and the canvas. Your mind for often is not even involved in it, which I believe is what meditation is or should be. The same thing happens with weeding. I think that's the same kind of a movement. Weeding is a movement like that in gardening altogether. I think athletes call it, is it being in the moment or something like that? I've forgotten the exact words they use, but they can picture what's going to happen and they create that happening. So I think that's kind of the same type of a feeling. And as far as painting, I did not actually paint until I moved to Berwick, which was about 15 years ago. And I actually, at one point, decided if you want to paint, you have to actually make time for it, make it like a job, which is, I tried to pick out certain hours every day and paint during that time. And that's kind of, it's like practicing anything. It's like playing the piano. It's like playing the violin. It's like drawing. It's like playing cards with more practice the better you get. So that's basically how and why I have become an artist. A ton of my stuff is from the imagination. My inspiration could be from a newspaper article. It could be one of my paintings here is from a dancer that was doing a belly dance and put flames on his head and, and it just came to me. Some of it is the movement, say, of the ocean. Some of it is fall. I love the autumn. I love the autumn colors. I have a shell painting here that I love collecting shells. I'm a beachcomber. I'm crazy with it. So I have a shell painting here. Um, elephants are one of my favorite animals. I have an elephant painting here. My inspiration comes from anywhere and everywhere. It could be a piece of news. It could be a shell that I picked up. It could be an article in the newspaper. So that's basically the, how I am inspired. I do occasionally look at how an animal moves or a person moves. Or if I'm trying to do a hand, I'll look at my hand in the mirror and place it in different ways. But basically, it's specifically from imagination. Like the horse in one of the paintings down here, I just imagined how it would be. That's all. I, and I imagine, for example, the waterfall. And I imagine the wave. So I, I mostly, my inspiration comes from imagination more than anything. And I think the more you imagine, the better you come at imagining. One other thing I wanted to add, I've had so many people say, you're an artist, I can't draw a straight line. Well, really the trick to any kind of drawing or painting is seeing. It has to do with how you look at something. When I look at, say, this computer, you have a picture in your mind of what a computer looks like. Well, not really. This is what the computer actually looks like. You have to draw what you see rather than what you think you see. That's a big trick to all 
drawing and painting. So I don't know how many people have said that, but say you're looking down on a lamp. You have to see the top of the lamp if you're looking down on it. You can't just draw it from what you think it's going to be. You have to draw it like you see it. That's another thing that I learned as I worked, as I went along.